we can change this planet and we are changing this planet. Here in Colorado, I think we know that because we, we live in a resource limited world in terms of water because we run out of it every now and then. Water is going to be the delivery mechanism for many of the impacts of climate change. The reason is, is that water is the mechanism by which the planet redistributes heat. As the planet warms, the atmosphere holds a whole lot more moisture. If you have a bigger sponge above our head here, it'll actually suck up more water vapor, and the wet areas of the planet get wetter and the dry areas get drier. Higher temperatures cause increased evaporation. Colorado's already limited water supply will decrease as temperatures climb, even without any change in precipitation. What our climate models are saying is that uh, the region, Colorado and the rest of the American West, really should become both warmer and drier. In my opinion, we're starting to see the effects of this warming now starting to take hold. We're looking at potentially 7 degree Fahrenheit increases in average summer temperatures by 2100. But storm tracks will move north and miss us and we'll have a faster transition than we have had in the past from winter into spring. A shorter winter season, a longer hot season, um, maybe a little bit more winter precipitation but less precipitation in, in the summer. Now that suddenly raises the specter of things like increased frequency of forest fires because we have a drier climate. And we think we're already seeing that. So for example, the summer of 2002 when it was so dry here and we had our big fire season and really low flows. Potentially a good, a good analog for what we might see in the future. We will have to plan differently for our water resources because we'll have less snow falling in general and more rainfall. It'll change how we have to store water and distribute water because we're used to it being stored in a snowpack and there may be less of that. It may fall more as rain in Colorado. We used to have a lot of little glaciers in Colorado. Um, go up and take a look at them these days. They're retreating rapidly. And we're watching these glaciers disappear. And so, we're, you know, we're losing part of our heritage. We're losing part of what makes Colorado unique and Colorado. About 80% of water in this state, like most western states, goes to irrigated agriculture. And that's part of our heritage. It's part of our food source. Um, it's an important part of what this state is. I'm Kip Gates. I'm a fifth generation cattle rancher here on this ranch. My ancestors came here in the 1880s and homesteaded this place. We've got over 750 acres here. I have 300 head of cattle. We cut our hay here on these meadows in the summertime, put it up, and then this is where these cattle are in the wintertime and we feed them the hay here. Our irrigation water comes from those mountains. Water is like gold to me. Without the water here, we could not raise and have it this lush and green as it is today. When I was young, we had a lot more snow. In the last 10 years, we've kind of had a drought. If the snow doesn't come in the wintertime, we don't have irrigation water to irrigate our crops. If we don't have that snow, we don't live. Colorado's rural areas struggle to secure enough water to sustain agriculture while growing urban populations increase demand on the state's limited water supply. In this state, by 2040, we'll have 8 million people in it. We're almost at 5 right now. If we want to support more growth here on the east slope, that means less water on the west slope for rafting, for fishing, for snowmaking, for skiing, for many of the outdoor activities that people here in Colorado move to this very place to enjoy.
So they're really hard choices here. You can't just blindly say, all right, we're going to support all this new growth with all this extra water because there isn't any extra water. It's going to come up from somewhere else. And, and the real question is, how do you take it from that other thing, be it agriculture or be it out of rivers on the west slope, and do the least harm? People need to realize that all of this water is allocated. It isn't like we have any to spare. Th three drought years in a row would empty the reservoir. So we only have a two to three year bank account in terms of the reservoir supply. The real solution here is conservation and, and much smarter use of water. The, the average household here in, in Colorado uses about 150 gallons per person per day, which is a whole lot of water. We can do a lot better than that and not suffer. The Alliance Center was originally constructed in 1908, and we're located right in the heart of Lower Downtown, which is the great historic district here in Denver. One of our goals was to reduce our water use by 50%. We thought that was going to be a very ambitious goal. So we undertook our retrofit. We, we changed our toilets, we changed our urinals, changed our faucets and our shower heads. We also installed Energy Star rated dishwashing machines. Welcome to the highlight of our Alliance Center tour, our water for urinals. Our old urinals used to use three gallons of water every single time you flushed one. This is the old pipe. We capped it off so you can see there is absolutely no water coming here to the urinal. And as a quick little demonstration. It's a patented technology. It has a, a cartridge in the bottom of it that you have to replace periodically. They are vitreous china so everything smoothly runs down and just as healthy as a regular urinal. As a result of that, we cut our water use by over 80% and our bill by almost 90%. Every single person that came in this building used an average of 89 gallons of water every single day. After our retrofit, the same person uses only 8 gallons of water every single day. I'm oftentimes asked, why did you do it? Do you want to save the environment or did you want to make money? Well, th those aren't two different choices. People need to start recognizing that it's the same thing. Uh, make no mistake, I mean, this is the issue for our kids. It's the, depending on how old we are, we're going to get to grapple with it. Um, fundamental uh, changes are going to occur to the planet and in our lifestyles. Um, we are going to get to redo, if you will, everything that's gone on since the Industrial Revolution in terms of how, how we operate this society. And, you know, while that's both scary, it's also really exciting. There are tremendous opportunities to here to do things better, more efficient, more sustainable, and, and to live in a better place ultimately.